dialogue part of the show. Uh, so we fold up all my toys here.
as that you're seeing, you might want some backstory. Or maybe not. Maybe you'll tell the backstory after you see that first poem. You know what I mean? So it depends on what you want to what you want to look at. If you don't feel like you need it, then you probably don't need it until you feel like you might need it, and then you probably do. Don't worry about it. If you're not feeling it, don't worry about it. The lights are coming. Sure. Anybody else? Uh, when I write, I tend to have a series of images in place first. Right. And I was wondering if you had any advice on how to bring them into the conversation with each other or have how to get from point A to point B with them because they're not even. It's, it's more tangible than story-based. And I don't know how to grasp, tackle with creating a story around these things that are important to me. I, I hear you drawing them now on your on Yeah. Your house. That's really cool. So you draw, so you, when you, Hunter says when he starts writing, he has a series of images, and he wants to know how to get to point A to point B and to sort of connect them. Are the images involving the same thing, so the same characters? Or? Um, Either they want, some of them will be very unrelated, and but I feel like there is something important between them that I want to discover, and I don't know how to go about that. Do you know what they're doing in each picture or image? Yeah, okay. it, it's usually one in one, which is a lot. Of okay, it's usually one. It's just like two things in, yeah. in an image. Okay, do they speak? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes, okay. sometimes they're people. Sometimes. Sometimes they're people, sometimes they're not. Do you, do you see um, it as like a, a graphic novel or a, it's, a manga? It's, or a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a play. It's a play, yeah. okay. So you can employ stage directions for things that don't speak, right? So you can describe what you have in your... So try, if it's going to be a play, okay, then try writing it out. So you attach the image and you can easily, you can just, you know, upload the image on your computer and have that as part of the text. And then you can describe it if they're not speaking. You know, a chair on stage with a typewriter. And you can just describe what happens, okay? But if they speak, you can try to give them dialogue. And try to realize every image that you have first and then see how they might fit together. You see what I mean? Just, just give them each a realized life on paper, you know, more so than we do, you know, have the image and then write something around it that's going to be a play. Okay, let's see, then you can, I know someone's working on this now. Every, they, every, you know, they, they pour the ice into a bucket and it makes that sound. But, um, but, okay, so you're going to give it a life on the page and then you can start to see how they fit together. Okay, try to give that a try, it's cool. Thank you. Anybody else?
like a device more than a real product or something that's driven by character, which I would prefer. Right. So if you have a device and it's not working, what do you need to do? I was just that. I mean, an aerial shot, you know, and you find, wow, my character, my main character who sees the world in this way feels so disconnected. Well, duh, because she's flying over the town. You know what I'm saying? She's not connected. Right. She's not like someone who's in the town. She, you know, she has an aerial, you know? Okay, so, yeah, I would say totally let go of that. You have to let go of that. It's like the, um, they have the, this, uh, in, in India, and I'm sure in other parts of the world, they have this method for catching uh, monkeys. And what they do is they, they, yeah, they hollow out a coconut, they put a little piece of food, do you know this method? No. Or they put a little piece of food in the, in the coconut, you know? And then the monkey comes along and goes, oh, wow, dinner. And she, he sticks his hand in the coconut, and they grab onto the food. The coconut is like in the tree, you know, they grab onto the food, and they hold on. They can't get their hand out. Because, you know, they're, they're holding on. And they're holding the coconuts like this. And they hang out there trying to get the food. And all of the hunter has to do is come around and just get them. Because they can't, they will not leave. They could leave easily by just letting go and climbing down the tree and running. But they're hanging on and hanging. So I just let go <laughs> of it. And see what else is out there for you, you know, so you can, so you can, you know, yeah. And I know it's a good trick if you ever want to catch, you know. I can catch my nephew that way. Okay, you can catch your nephew. There you go. Anybody else? What's your name?
jump in, right? The, the gun goes off, go, and you run, right? That's, that's what we should strive for, that kind of dedication, you know? So the, the muse shows up, but she shows up when you show up, not necessarily the other way around. Okay, so you're planning to write a play. So you got a game plan, you got a title, you got some characters. What do you need? I have some ideas, but I'm just playing with dialogue. Great, great, great. Are you reading plays? Yes. Great, that's free. Are you maybe going to see plays when you can? When you can, when you can afford it, when your time allows? Great. Do you have a game plan, like a daily writing schedule?